Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and I guess today we're going to make another tutorial. And what should it be about? I don't know. How about these freeze frame titles? That's pretty cool. And if I look pretty boring in those titles, then uh, how about we look at my dog? That's my dog. Her name is Betsy Dog. And uh, she looks a little bit better than me. But uh, how about something else? How about some nunchucks? Yeah, you just realized that Evan can use nunchucks. It's going to blow your mind. Let's get into the tutorial. First thing you want to do is open up After Effects, and then we're going to go File, New, Project. And not really, because I'm done with that. That's stupid. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and import a file. And the file we would like is one of these. Uh, which one, even? That's like my dog. That's like my dog, 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 dog. Mm, this one looks about right. So, we're going to make the one with the nunchucks, and the first thing you do is you bring in your footage. Mine happens to be 1920 by 1080 at 23.9 frames per second. Bring that onto the new comp, make a new comp of it, and let's go ahead and try to find at least a decent looking skill. That looks pretty good. I mean, I rarely look very good, so I think this is about as close as I'm going to get. You'll probably get something much better if you're more attractive than I am, or if you have more attractive actors and actresses available. Uh, what you'll do is you'll select your layer, and you're going to go on a Mac, Command-Shift-D, or on a Windows machine, Control-Shift-D. Now hit page down to advance ahead of frame, and do that again. That's Command Shift D, or Control Shift D. And we'll just zoom in here and look at what we did. What we've done is we've used the split layer command to split the layer, advance a frame, and split it again. So we've segmented, or segregated, the one frame that we would like. Let's go ahead and trim down our composition so it's something that we can work with more or less. Um, try to give ourselves a little bit less crazy amount of room on each side. Trim comp to your work area. Now you can actually work. Or, you know, whatever. If you call this work. So, um, let us select this one layer in the middle here. Call this our still. Let's call this our pre-roll. Call this our post-roll. And our still, we will go layer, pre-compose, and leave all your attributes there. And it's fine to call it still comp1 for now. OK. We go into this, select this layer, and then hold down Alt, and then hit squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket, both of them, both the left and right squiggly brackets, to shorten your, uh, your layer down to just this one frame. And then... Go ahead and hit B and N and shorten your comp to be just this frame. Now you want to go trim comp to work area. So we have a comp that is one frame long and holds only this one frame. And that's about it for now. Let's go back to the original comp. Uh, things are going to get a little bit complicated here when we go to where it was taken out. Hit uh, squiggly bracket left, left squiggly bracket, or right squiggly bracket, they'll both get it in front of you. Um, and you're going to want to zoom in, and you can either drag like this across, or you can hold down Alt and set it using uh, the squiggly brackets again. But you need to bring that back out so that it's relevant again and everything's working. And then you will go layer, time, freeze frame. So you have one frame, and now you're freezing that frame forever. So you're forced to look at me for a really long time. Now I'll stretch this out. Um, I'm not really sure how long you want to make yours for, but uh, mine's going to be a while. Let's see, I'm at 17.15 now. Yeah, that's good enough. This is quite long enough. So, And now move that out, move this out to there. If you hold down shift when you slide things around, you'll be able to snap them. And yeah, so this will be good. So we've got some pre-roll, we've got some freeze, and we've got some post, where I fumble and fail miserably. So, we're going to go with this still comp 1. 
um, and what we're going to want to do is duplicate it in here. You're going to want to call this still bottom and still top because we want to separate the individual awesome me from the fairly bland and boring wooden background. Not that my personality isn't equally wooden, but we just need to differentiate them for visual sake so that I don't blend into the background like I do at parties. So let's go ahead and take this layer and duplicate it. Select the bottom one. Grab still bottom here. Hold down Alt, drag, and boom. So now you've replaced this, better named still bottom. And this one here we'll do with the top just to be 110%. But that's it. Call this one still top. Now go into the still top, double click on this, and we're going to use a fancy new tool called the Roto Brush. And this is going to be fun. So, you know, double click on the layer, and that'll pop it open in your layer window. Grab the Roto Brush, and if you haven't used the Roto Brush before, this is going to be an adventure for you for sure. And if you don't have CS5, um, pretend instead that I'm manually masking around my image here. And you can do it for real yourself and enjoy using your time that way if you so desire. But uh, the Roto Brush has a lot of interesting tools about it. And as you can see, I am causing a rotoscope right now live as we're talking. And this is great. This is something else. Um, I'm not really going to do it very precisely because I'm not that interested in doing it that precisely right now. Um, but uh, some of the cool things about this brush, this Roto Brush tool, is that uh, I mean, to use it, basically you just click when it's green, you're saying add this to the selection, hold down Alt, it becomes red, and you're saying take this away from the selection and you get this nice pink line around showing you what is and isn't in the selection. If you want the brush size to change, hold down Command or Control and then just click and drag up and down and it's, it's that easy. And I mean you can zoom in and just pew pew pew. And this is really great. And another cool thing about the Roto Brush is that it is adaptive over time and it will save you time every time you're gonna love it. You're gonna love using this Roto Brush. I this is probably one of the reasons I got a uh, CS5 when I did was just for this brush because sometimes I'm doing uh, have to chroma key people and they didn't even think to use a chroma key uh, screen. Actually, they just stood somewhere. I'm like, hey, how would you just cut around me? That's easy to do, motion graphics guy. You don't have anything else going on with your day. Anyway, once you've got the outline kind of how you want, um, you will want to go into your layers effects here. And I mean, if I could organize this stuff a bit better. Anyway, you're going to want to refine the mat in some way, um, play around with these settings here and get things just how you like. I like to pump up the smoothness a little bit for this. Um, and important thing to do next is to pull this out and hit freeze. Freezing. Doo -doo. And this will basically lock in all the hard work you did. So let's go back to still top. See, it's nice and cut out. Still bottom is still just as we left it. And here we have both. So let's turn the sound off for all of them. And let's just solo still top, looks good, still bottom, still bottom, and uh, yeah, so that's good to go. Basically, you've done all of the hard work now, and it's down to making things look cool. Okay, so the first thing to do is to go ahead and let's duplicate the still top and still bottom so that we have one that we can make dirtied up and one that we can keep clean. Uh, that is, that's a naming convention that we use to say that anything that has not been affected is the clean version and anything that has been affected is the dirty version. And we'll make sure that we take the clean 
of everything because obviously the moving ones are going to be clean as well. And let's just set their color to be a nice, a nice dark green there so that we remember that. And I think the first thing we should do is probably treat up our footage here a little bit and make it a little bit more exciting. So uh, what we'll be doing is giving it a little bit of a tint. Give it a tint 25 and give it a curves. Tint and curves are really all you're ever going to need. We'll just maybe push the contrast a little bit here and give it a little bit of a cross process look I think I'm always a fan of adding some more cross process into into things I think it's really quite quite hipster and you do that by skewing basically two values away from each other so red we've gone down and up and blue we've gone up and down so causes these variations in the lights and shadows so we've got that going on, and that's about it for treating the things that we uh, don't care too much about. So go to your first layer, select both of these, Control c or Command-C for those, and then select all of these, and then paste. So now they've all got that applied to them, and we should be good to go. Next thing to do is to animate on these layers that we've put in here so make some of our our work worthwhile and kind of show this off so what we want to do is animate this on using a linear wipe nice big old linear wipe set the feather to 500 uh, I'm using a feather of 500 but my footage is HD and quite large um, and basically we're going to set the transition completeness to 100 to start and you can go ahead about one, two, three, four, five or so frames and then shut that down. So that's about right. And you might want to play with the angle a little bit, but uh, I think I'm good. Tint it down to 100% and give this a curves as well. You'll find curves is kind of a, a theme that I get into a little bit. Uh, curves never really goes out of style, I don't think. I can't. Couldn't imagine why anyone would ever not wish to use it. Some people use levels instead of curves, and that's totally your option, but it's not as good, and you know it. Uh, never forget that, I think. Okay. Yeah, that's looking about right. So we go from this a bit more washed out part and we we'll want to affect the top as well and if we can just borrow the linear wipe from here so copy the linear wipe paste it on here and just change its uh, angle around so they come on like in different angles perhaps Oh, look at that. They're coming out in different angles. And then let's uh, do some of the same things. So I'm going to tint this down. We're going to use the drop shadow. And drop shadow. Uh, put your distance to zero. And put your softness to 100. Uh, go ahead and duplicate that. And then set its softness to 50. So you get kind of this... Uh, harder kind of line around it adds a little bit more depth to it curves adjustment again where we're going to try to bring some more contrast out of this and maybe just punch up the red just a little bit just to give it something to look at so that's looking pretty good uh, good enough anyway so perhaps we want to bring in some texture to kind of grunge up the background um, let's see what do I have for that Paper. All right, import that. Put it between the top clean and the bottom dirty, and we'll just maybe rotate that to fit in here a little bit better. So 
scale it up a bit. Uh, set its blending mode to I think overlay would be fine. Eh. So it's adding some color in there, some textures. Let's actually use levels on this one. And that's just because it can give us some pretty tight control on here. It's pretty good. And you, know, you can just trim this up to fit inside. Trim it up, trim, trim, trim. And I suppose we'll use the same kind of linear wipe that we used before. We'll use it on this. So, boom, boom. That's working out pretty well, I think. I think so, anyway. So, so far so good. Things are getting grungy, things are getting animated on. Boom. Next we'll do that uh, rising sun, kind of a burst behind. So let's go and make a triangle using the polystar tool. Make sure you have no layer selected and just click and drag, hold down shift and drag out a polystar. And now we're going to affect uh, some cool stuff in here. Um, you will go ahead and you know the outer radius and stuff isn't going to matter too much. I uh, just want to make sure that your position is kind of below here because we're going to play around and try to generate the look that we want. And we want to also add, need to add a repeater. Oh, not there though. If we could just move. You want your repeater to be added below the rest of the uh, attributes. So you can do that by selecting contents and then going add repeater as opposed to putting it inside the polystar, which is going to change the uh, the reference point that it uses to generate more things. So set the position change to zero, the rotation change to 36. Mm, yeah, that's about right. And you would like the number of copies to be 10. So now you've got this nice ring going on. Back to the polystar, we're going to edit that by making sure its scales aren't linked and you're going to just shrink it a little grow it a bit and then you're going to have to bring them back in like so but that's about it there you go one starburst marginally completed how will this come on we can animate it up from uh, zero to one two three four five to however big we need it to be um, Let's also affect its rotation by giving an expression that's like time times five. So it'll be constantly turning when it comes on. And let's put it behind uh, this still top, uh, still top clean. Um, and we want it there because we get to use the alpha layer, you know, the alpha of this to mask over that. And, uh, you know, that's just handy, I think. Boom. You can kind of just move it to be more where you want it. You know, you want it coming out of your subject. You want it to make sure your scale is still large enough to accommodate everything you need. It's coming on the right speed. And you also want it to look uh, not crappy. So let's try to let's set this to a color burn. <laughs> let's give it a uh, gradient. Or sorry, we call it a ramp. Give it a ramp. And with the ramp, let's put the start of the ramp in the middle. Let's put the end of the ramp out here. And we'll set it to a radial ramp. So we're kind of affecting how much opacity we give it using the ramp. And we're going to use the fractal noise. And uh, set the contrast here to like 300. That looks pretty good. Blending mode. Throw that down to lighten. So kind of lighten up everything. Um, what else do we need out of this? Uh, the edges are too clean, so we use obviously something to roughen them. So that's roughening up the edges. And uh, last but not least, let's give it a uh, give it a curves adjustment in here and see if we can't make this a little bit more palatable. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better. So 
There we go. Now we got that going on. This isn't going to look exactly like the example because I'm doing it again. So uh, we got that. We got that. Uh, let's see. What else could we like? Uh, probably some text or something around. But uh, this is the basic thing, and everything else is really up to you. And the last thing to do is to take things away the same way you brought them on. And so you can do that by hitting U and opening up. Uh, select everything, hit U, and it'll bring up their keyframes. And what I do is I copy the first keyframe, put your playhead at the end, Control C, Control V, and then just advance a few frames, and then uh, put in one, two, three, four, five, and then put in this keyframe. So Control C, Control V. So then it kind of leaves the ways it, ways it came on, and so on. So we do the same thing for everything. Go to the end, Control C, Control V pad back a little bit and then control C control V so it's coming and going exactly the same way so just finish up these other ones here do 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 so as you can see it comes on we wait a while you can put in some text and stuff for people to read and then it goes away and it's all done so I suppose that's about it you can do more if you want you can have those kind of squiggly things you should probably uh think about turning on uh everything's motion blur for anything that's being animated so uh let's go ahead and crank all of that on you probably don't need it for your clean stuff because they're not really animating in any way but everything else it could help to have that just because it'll add a little bit more motion to what's going on and yeah the blending modes can create some interesting effects. Um, actually, there's one more thing to do. Uh, we forgot to put, you know, play around with the blending modes here. Maybe set this to hard light. Yeah, that's doing it. Yeah, that's good. That is spot on. That's looking a little bit more, more textured. So, uh, yeah, you can play around and find what works for you. Uh, making these fun little starburst things here can be fun, and the little affectations that'll make it really stand out and you know the best tip I can say is to learn how to use nunchucks because that's gonna really take you far well that's about it thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this and had fun I hope you subscribe and if you have any questions about the tutorial leave them in the comments I try to answer all of the questions no question is ever considered to be lame or stupid Believe it or not, I once was pretty terrible at things like nunchucks and After Effects once. If you want to learn how to use nunchucks, let me know, and maybe I'll make a video about that. It's not, as you can see, what I'm an expert in, but I am not too terrible with it. Is that a good way to describe what's going on? Anyway, I hope you had fun. I look forward to seeing what you guys make, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And yeah, stay classy out there. I'm Evan Abrams.